I can see souls. For as long as I can remember I've been able to see the physical manifestation of people's souls. Their body will twist and warp into a depiction of what their soul looks like. Their essence. It's not constant. It doesn't happen with every person I encounter. But it has helped protect me in a handful of situations that I was unsure of. It never fails to catch me off guard. Imagine talking to someone you've known for years when suddenly their face and body change and bend in ways that should be impossible while they continue to talk to you completely unaware of what's happening. Sometimes it'll happen just from looking at pictures of people. I've never seen any two manifestations be the same. There have been similarities though, especially in those people who are inherently good. The whole thing scares the shit out of me quite frankly. I can't just reach in and bring their souls forward. It happens randomly with no rhyme or reason. And it rarely happens when meeting someone for the first time. Forming relationships and bonds with people is too much of a gamble for me. Risk falling in love with someone only to wake up next to them one morning and see a grotesque monster lying in bed with you. Yeah no fucking thank you. It's the same with friendships. You'd think something like this would make me a little more willing to trust. But until I see the soul I can't even bring myself to try. It was a lesson I learned the hard way. If I'm being honest. I was careless back when I thought that living a normal life was something that was possible for me. I often got to see the true colors of the people I surrounded myself with just a little too late. I've seen so many souls at this point in my life. Most people truly are good, but there is nothing that can ease my fear. Once you know something you can never truly unknow it. I have seen that there really is evil here with us. And that evil is as human as the rest of us. Out of the souls I've seen none of them could possibly hold a candle to the horrors of this one man. It has left me forever wondering how many of them are out there. How many are just watching and waiting for their time to destroy us. His name was Michael. I really thought I was safe with him. We'd been friends for close to eight months. And while I hadn't been shown his soul I also hadn't seen any red flags. I wouldn't go as far as to say I thought he was the one. We weren't dating by any official sense. I knew he loved me. And I loved him. That was enough for me. He provided a sense of comfort. A sense of home. A feeling of peace I had never experienced. With him there was no fear. I didn't care if I ever saw his soul. But that all changed when my mother was hospitalized. It was November. And my father called me in a panic. My mom had been taken to the hospital via ambulance. He refused to elaborate over the phone, he just asked me to be there. I made it to his house far faster than I should have. And we rushed to the hospital. Sitting in the waiting room we anxiously waited for the doctors to allow us to see her. It felt like an eternity. But they continued to assure us they were doing everything they could. She was transferred to the ICU and intubated. Once her vitals were steady we were called in to see her. The nurses were all so wonderful. They told us to keep talking to her, assured us that she'd be able to hear us. The doctors were helpful in reassuring us that she would in fact be okay that her and my father caught her ailment in time. By the time 2 a.m. rolled around my father told me I should go home. I hesitated, what child wouldn't? But I knew he was right. I hadn't brought my own vehicle so I called the one person who I knew would be awake. Michael picked up before the phone even finished the first ring. He came to pick me up immediately with no complaints. The town we lived in was small. Think, a library. Store, school, gas station, and two restaurants all a five-minute walk from my home. The road that leads into town is nestled between two graveyards. He and I would often walk to those graveyards from my house to leave offerings by the gravestones that had been long forgotten. It was when we pulled up to the stop sign that everything changed. He pulled into the dirt next to the wall of one of the graveyards and put the car in park. I felt dread enter me. It was the sudden feeling of drowning. Of having the wind knocked out of you when you're hit in the back a little too hard. Every muscle in my body tensed up, told me I needed to get the fuck out of there. He called my name but it came out like a demand. I slowly brought my eyes to his face. His features were so twisted I could hardly tell he was human. His mouth was stretched into a horrible grin. The corners of his lips reached his cheekbones. 
and through the moonlight streaming into the car I could see his teeth were rotted and cracked. His skin was covered in scales and sores. His eyes had morphed into a deep black. I could hear him talking to me. I could see him reaching towards me with his hands now gnarled and crooked. I forced myself to stay and look. He was still changing. Part of me needed to know the whole truth of him. I pressed myself against the door. Made myself as small as possible while he spoke. Saying things like how he could no longer pretend he didn't want me. How appropriate it was that we were having this conversation by a graveyard. I bit my tongue to keep myself from screaming as he grabbed one of my hands with his own. I could feel blood pooling in my mouth. The coppery taste mixing with the tears I swallowed. A cocktail of fear. And he was enjoying it. I knew I needed to get out, but I couldn't get my door unlocked without distracting him. His form was still shifting. A putrid smell rolling off of him as his skin sloughed off to be replaced by shards of glass. I remembered wondering if even just touching him would scar me forever. The distraction I needed presented itself when he grabbed my face with both his hands and pulled me to him. He kissed me hard, holding my face so tightly in his grip I thought for sure I would be walking away with bruises. I reached back with one hand feeling for the lock and flipped it. He ripped himself away from me. I took the opportunity to bring my leg up and kicked him while simultaneously throwing my door open. When I looked back into the car he was holding his face, blood and glass falling through his fingers. He had stopped shifting. He was entirely made of glass and nails. In place of his eyes were hollow black holes. And where his mouth was previously was now instead a long and jagged shred of mirrored glass that still formed a sickening smile. I ran to the nearest house. It was my elementary school bus driver. Small towns for the win. His wife made me tea, but when she asked what happened all I could bring myself to say was, someone wasn't who I thought they were. I'm just shaken up, I wasn't hurt. She loaded me into her car and brought me back to my house. After doing a thorough investigation I locked all the doors and windows and crawled into bed. It wasn't until I reached for my phone to let my dad know that I made it home that I felt the pain in my cheek. I went to the bathroom and saw a small cut. I squeezed it and watched in horror as a small, almost invisible shard of glass came to the surface of the wound. I pulled it out and let it fall to the bathroom counter. That night I had learned the hard way sometimes you just can't trust who someone claims to be. If you do, you may walk away scarred.